into your presence with thanksgiving with praise with adoration because you are worthy to be praised you are worthy to be adored definitely you are the almighty you are the king of kings you are the lord of lords you are the I am that I am you are the unchangeable lord once you speak it is done there is no one who can challenge you Father, we bless your name. You are the Lion of the tribe of Judah. You are the bright and morning star. You are the Alpha, you are the Omega. You are the beginning, you are the ending. All power belongs to you, Father. Glory be to your holy name, Lord. Accept our worship in Jesus' name. Father, we are here again today. We have been here before. The last time we were here, you showed up too. And you did the marvelous things. And we trust you, Father, that you will even do greater things today. Amen. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, bless your children today. Amen. Bless our nation today. Amen. Bless the world today. Amen. Speak to us, Father. Amen. And as your word will be going forth, Father, let it bring healings to our bodies, Amen. to our souls, Amen. to our spirits, Amen. to our businesses. Amen to our marriages, Amen. to our homes, Amen. to our churches, Amen. and to our nations. Amen. Thank you, Daddy. Amen. For we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Let somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You're welcome once again in Jesus' name. So good to see you. Uh, people have asked so many questions. Where's your wife? Uh, we had a dilemma. The eldest son of my sister was getting married today. And uh, since the father of the bride chose the day, there was nothing we could do. So I had to choose between attending the wedding and coming here. Uh, since I couldn't afford not to come here, I sent my better half to go and represent me. <laughs> Glory be to God. And like I was asking one of my sons yesterday, if the better half is absent, what remains? <laughs> Must be the good half or something. <laughs> so you have to make do with the good half. <laughs> Amen. They have to be good for there to be a better, right? Yeah. Amen. So she's here in the spirit. And she sent her love. Today, our Bible study is a very serious one. I have prayed that God will allow me to say only those things that must be said. And to keep back that which must be kept back for the future. But we will let you into just a little bit of what God has been doing concerning Nigeria and what he plans to do concerning Nigeria. So if you will open your Bibles to Exodus 14, 
I will read from verse 13 to 22, Exodus 14, verse 13 to 22. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Amen. The Lord shall fight for you, Amen. and ye shall hold your peace. Amen. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thy hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them, and I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by night to these, so that the one came not near the other all the night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. There are certain things that God does that is dangerous to share. I will only tell you just a little bit of some of what he's been doing for years in Nigeria. Because I believe that those of us who are here today are matured enough to hear with spiritual ears and to keep our mouth shut where it is necessary. Do I hear amen to that? Amen. The introduction to our study says it is interesting that the world's the great trek which actually means the Exodus, were freely used in reference to Lekki 98. Actually, Lekki 98 marks the beginning of freedom for Nigeria. And believe me honestly, there are glorious days ahead. Yeah. Now, our study is divided into two sections. The first bit says, freedom is sweet that could be lost. Some years ago, God spoke to me and said, Son, go to Abuja and hold the Holy Ghost Festival. We went. We held the Holy Ghost Festival. Souls were saved. The sick were healed. And some prayers were said. Some were said in the open. Some were said behind locked doors. A couple of months after that festival, somebody stepped aside. We were excited. But like little children, you know, we learn from experience. When somebody stepped aside, we thought that that was the end of the story. We should have gone back for another Holy Ghost service. And Nigeria would have been spared a lot of headache. But we didn't go. We thought we already had victory. And because we did not move at a time when we were supposed to move, like the children of Israel, as soon as they came out of Egypt and they got to the Red Sea, they thought it was time for holidays. Oh, here is the sea. Let's sit down and enjoy by the beach. They did not realize that freedom, though sweet, could be lost. 
We well, thank God we've learned our lessons. At least I've learned my own. And I know by the special grace of God, the freedom that God has started to give us, beginning with Lucky 98, shall not be lost. Yeah. I will play my part. Thank you very much. I know there are some people here who will also play their part. The Bible made it clear to us in Philippians chapter 3, from verse 12 to 14, Philippians 3, 12 to 14, Paul said, I do not count myself to have already attained. He said, one thing I do, I forget the things that are behind and I press forward. Brethren, that's what we Christians must do. Lucky 98 came. It is our own exodus. It is the beginning of the journey to the promised land. Several things had happened between Lucky 98 and now. And I'm sure many of us could not even believe that so much could be done within such a short time. I have shared with those who are very close to me, and many of you know by now that by the grace of God, I am not a politician. I do not want to be a politician. I tell you the truth, I hate politics. Because the average politician is a liar. I, I didn't say that. A politician said it. A great politician told the whole world that he's out of politics. Months later, he decided to return to politics. So the journalists challenged him. But you said that you are no longer interested in politics. He said, you mean you believe that? <laughs> they said, yes. He said, then you are not a politician. So I'm not the one who said the average politician is a liar. It's a politician who said so. But I have several other reasons why I am not interested in politics. But I am interested in Nigeria. I'm interested in the welfare of this nation. Because God didn't make a mistake when he made me a Nigerian. And I know, maybe a little more than others, the plans of God for this nation. Believe me honestly, it is a great plan. Believe it or not, this nation is going to become the greatest in the whole world. I've told you that one before. I am saying it again and you can quote me. This nation is going to be the number one nation in the whole wide world. That the almighty God give us the president that we have now. If you just sit down and meditate, you will know it's a miracle. In fact, it's a triple miracle. Because it takes God, it takes only God, to find a southerner that is acceptable to the northerners, a civilian that is acceptable to the army, <laughs> a civilian that is called a general, <laughs> And a Christian that is acceptable to the Muslims. Find these three qualities in one man. Pick up the man. Take him to the school of tribulations. Show him hell. Show him death. Show him that life is nothing. And then pull him out. And within a couple of months, put him on the throne. Only God can do that. Only God. Only God can do that. So I've said it before, the president is not the president because you voted for him or you did not vote for him. He's there because God puts him there. And so when you hear some prophets saying that he's going to be hacked to death, or is going to be poisoned, or is going to die prematurely, just say, yeah, yeah. That's the answer to such prophecies. 
There's only one fellow who can kill the present president, and that's himself. And I'm sure he's not ready to commit suicide yet. And you can quote me. I don't know about the second time in office, but this first time, you can relax. I'm not saying you should not pray for him. I'm not saying that there will be people, that everybody will be happy. God told us in January this year, he says, some people who think they are clever will be surprised. Daddy has just started. As they used to say, you haven't seen anything yet. However, we must not now sit down at the beach and begin to Relax, like the children of Israel did, because they got to the Red Sea, spread out, and thought that it was time now to frolic. <laughs> but then they looked back and they found that Pharaoh was coming. You see, it is good, like the others who say, for the slave to escape. It's also good for the slave owner to pursue, to want to bring back. But believe me honestly, as the Lord lives, and as he keeps me alive, and he keeps some of you here, I would have loved to say all of you, but at least some of you who will be dedicated, who will take a decision today, as he keeps us alive, the freedom we have won, nobody is taking it from us. Yeah. But, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13 says, Ephesians 6 13 says, Having done all, we are to stand. Lucky Night 8 was a tremendous success, but it's not time to rest yet. In fact, it is just the beginning of assignment for us. The Bible said in Luke chapter 9 verse 62, Luke 9 62, it said, Once we have laid our hands on the plow, we must not look back if we are to be fit for the kingdom of God. And I know by the grace of God, I'm going to see all of you in the kingdom. Lucky 98 was not without some imperfections. Thank God for the press. The press was very positive. At least 90% of them were very positive. They could have picked several things from Lucky 98 and uh, criticized us on it. And one of the things was that we paralyzed the traffic in Lagos for 18 hours. That was serious. That was not 100% Christian. Even though I will tell you that the, the little rascal in me rejoiced. Because it was a show of power. Power of the Almighty God. Glory be to God. But then the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1. Hebrews 6 verse 1. He said we are to go on to perfection. So we are believing God that uh, Festival 99 is going to be far, far better, better organized, better executed than Lucky 98. As a matter of fact, by the grace of God, I think I can tell you now that Festival 99 is going to take three days, not one night. And it's going to take place at the redemption camp. Now the reason for that, where the reasons are, number one, we did find a piece of land by Lekki, I mean by the ocean, which we are going to get one day. But they're asking for 700 million for 500 acres. And you should have seen the place. It's extremely beautiful. The moment I saw the place, I said, God, we will get this place. Even if we don't get it right now, nobody will get it till we are ready. Because I know, I mean, how much is uh, 700 million? When you think of that wine dollar, it's just about 7 million dollars. And I know that there are people seated here today who within one year will call me. 
and say, Daddy, how much do you say is that line? And I say, oh, they said 700 million. I said, Daddy, I'll give you a billion naira to start with. Not only to buy the place, but to begin the preparations for what you want to build there. Is there anybody like that here at all? <laughs> Let me hear you say amen. amen. But then the second reason is that if we are going to keep people together and we are expecting 20 million, for three days, you need a lot of infrastructure. You, you need tremendous amount of toilets. I mean, 20 million people can, can do quite a lot of damage to food. And within three days, they will need to go and release themselves. You're going to need a lot of showers, etc., etc. So, we at least have something to begin with at the camp and we can then improve on that added to that of course is that by the grace of God we have about 500 acres of land that we could clear and use for this particular program so we are moving to the camp that's why we are calling it Festival 99 not Lefty 99 and then we will see when God is ready to bring us back to the beach but then the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 3 verse 14. Hebrews 3 verse 14. He said, we become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence fast till the end. In other words, it's not just enough to start. We must hold on fast till the very end. And Matthew 10 verse 22. Matthew 10 verse 22 says, it is he who endures to the end that shall be saved. In Revelation chapter 3 verse 11, Revelation 3 verse 11 says, Hold fast that which you have. Let no man take your crown. I believe that the crown is in the head of Christians now. Amen. And it's going to remain there. Amen. I didn't hear your amen. amen. <laughs> you better say the amen loud and clear. Amen. But then this means we cannot afford to rest. On our words. When you read the story in 1 Kings chapter 13, if you read from verse 1 to 24, 1 Kings 13 verse 1 to 24, it tells us the story of a young prophet that God sent on an errand. He went, delivered the message, and then he was on his way back. But before he got to home, he decided to rest. It was while he was resting that an old prophet who was no longer in tune with God, came and took him back to town to go and eat. That boy never got home. A lion finished him. We are going to get home. Yeah. Say it loud and clear, brethren. Yeah. So, Lucky Night was a huge success. We give God the glory for it. There are imperfections here and there. We had problems with some of our music and uh, the coverage, the speakers were not as effective as they should be, etc., etc. We have been, we've long ago now started looking ahead towards December 99. In fact, the last time I was in Britain, I did some checking and I uh, was told that for that kind of crowd, what we need is an equipment that will cost only one million pounds. <laughs> I laughed. I said, well, we shall make it. <laughs> but uh, one million pounds. Amen. <laughs> Don't worry, you're looking at a future millionaire. <laughs> and I'm looking at future millionaires too. And then that brings us to the second part of our discussion, which is very, very crucial too. And he says we are on the winning side. But we must move on. When you read the story of the children of Israel by the Red Sea, when they heard the sound of the enemy from behind them, automatically they were afraid because they knew that the force coming from behind was going to take them, either take them back into slavery or kill them. They had the rumblings, and I'm sure some of you are already hearing some rumblings. 
And so they were afraid. And instead of crying to God, they cried to Moses. And fortunately, Moses was wise enough to know that when they cry to him, he should cry to God. And God said unto him, why are you crying to me? You think I don't know what I am doing? Before I sent you to go and bring the children of Israel, I told you, you will worship me on this mountain. So when I hear rumblings, in on pages of newspaper, on television, when I hear rumblings, I smile. Let there be rumblings. My father is on his throne. Yeah. And nobody can move him from his throne. What he has planned for Nigeria will come to pass. Yeah. And then, God told Moses to do certain things. He said, tell the children of Israel to move forward. Move forward into what? <laughs> <laughs> there is the Red Sea there. Move forward and drown. And I said, no, before you ask them to move forward, you do something. You lift your hands across the Red Sea and divide it. So you will discover that it was not really God who divided the Red Sea. It was Moses. He lifted his hand and the sea was parted. Today, by the grace of God, I'm going to lift my hands. And uh, some Red Sea will part in Jesus' name. Yeah. So today is, we are not going to receive a handshake. I think we've received two already. And those two should keep us going for a long time. We will do something ex a little bit differently today. And uh, there, will be, there will be good news in Jesus' name. Yeah. But then as soon as God spoke to Moses, he told his angel, that was leading the children of Israel and the pillar of cloud that was going before them to change position and come and stand behind the children of Israel so that there be a separation between them and the Egyptians. You see, the word of God says in Isaiah 59 verse 19, Isaiah 59 verse 19, he said, when the enemy comes in, then like a flood, the Spirit of God will raise up a standard against him. When your enemy tries to close in on you, God will go and stand behind you and say, you can't come near my child. Amen. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 31, Romans 8 31, he said, if God be for us, who can be against us? And in Romans 8 37, Romans 8, 37, he said, We are more than conquerors because of him who loves us. And that passage which I love so much, First John chapter 4, verse 4, First John chapter 4, verse 4 says, Ye are of children, uh, ye have got little children, and ye have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We are of God. We are of the Lord of hosts. We belong to the one who has never lost a battle. We are on the winning side. God says, even before we fight, we have won. Tell your neighbor, <laughs> you are looking at a winner. Uh, you better say it as if you mean it. So don't bother yourself about those coming from behind. Don't worry about those who want to attack you from behind. The, 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 your backside is already taken care of. Yeah. Do I hear amen to that? Yeah. And then God told Moses to lift his hands. Moses' hands are special hands. And once in a while, God does raise up a man and he gives him special hands. God spoke to me a couple of weeks ago and said, there's a difference between humility and denial of divine abilities. And he gave me some very strong warnings. I'm not going to tell you the details. It's none of your business. 
But he told me that it would be wrong to hide the fact that he's giving me special hands. I didn't achieve it. I did not work for it. I cannot glory in it because it all glory belongs to him. But the truth is the truth. And these special hands, by the grace of God, will touch your heads today. Yeah. Because when, those, when the hands touch your head, it will not only take care of your businesses, it will take care of your health also. Yeah. It will take care of your emotions. Yeah. It will take care of your families too. Yeah. Now the hands of Moses were special hands because when you read Exodus 17 verse 8 to 13, Exodus 17, verse 8 to 13, you will find that when the Amalekites came to fight against the children of Israel, it was the hands of Moses that determined the course of the war. When his hands were up, the children of Israel prevailed. When his hands went down, the Amalekites prevailed. When he got tired and his hands could no longer hold up, Aaron and Hor were there. They could have said, all right, you are tired, you sit down, let us raise our own hands too. The battle would have been lost. But they recognized that <laughs> these hands are special, not like our own hands. So they made him comfortable, they gave him a seat to sit on. And then they helped with the hands. God bless you, baby. Uh, you are going to serve the Lord. And so they run a horse and eh, <laughs> those hands must remain up. And they supported the hands. Thank you, all of you who have already been supporting our hands. God will continue to support you too. Amen. The hands of Moses were not ordinary hands because if you read Exodus chapter 4, verse 1 to 4, Exodus 4, verse 1 to 4, you discover that when that hand grabbed a serpent by the tail, the serpent became a rod. That means he has hands that could silence demons. And I believe very firmly that the demons in Nigeria are going to be chased out of this place. Yeah. And when you read Exodus 4 verse 20, Exodus 4 verse 20, you will know that in the hands of Moses was a very potent weapon. That weapon is called the rod of God. It used to be the rod of Moses. He threw it on the ground. He became a serpent. He ran away from it. So from that moment onward, it was no longer the rod of Moses. He grabbed it by the tail. He became a rod again. And from that day onward, he became the rod of God. There are certain powers in the hands of anointed men of God. They are not physical. So many a times you cannot see them. But when a man of God raises his hand to bless you, you better say amen to that. Amen. <laughs> if he raises his hand to curse you, you better fall down and begin to beg. I remember years ago in Akure there was one Juju man. I don't want to begin to mention him, but they call him Dr. Something. He was extremely ruthless. And several people from the very top to the very bottom we are flocking to him. But his uh, shrine was next to the factory of one of my children. And um, this child of mine came and reported and said, Sir, I don't mind all these people coming to him even though I know that this man is satanic. But each time I go around my factory, I find dead children with head cut off with genitals removed and I know that this man is using these human beings for his activity I want him away from my factory so I said alright I'll be visiting Akure when we get there we will see so we went to Akure and then he showed me the place. I said, uh, that's all right. So I lifted my right hand and I said, uh, Dr. Soso, -so, be moved. In Jesus' name. 
Ah, uh, my child says that all. <laughs> I said, what else do you want? You want to be moved, right? He said, yeah. Hey, I have said, be moved. Uh, uh, can't we, I thought we at least we will pray for... I said, there are times for prayers, there are times for decrees. This man built his shrine around an Iroko tree. Within seven days, the Iroko tree died. And uh, within another seven days, there was no longer doctor somebody. Now, every Iroko tree <laughs> near your factory will move today. <laughs> Glory be to God. You see, the rod in the hand of Moses was not an ordinary rod. Because when you read Exodus 7, verse 10 to 12, Exodus 7, verse 10 to 12, that same rod swallowed up all the serpents of Egypt. And every demon, every evil force, that will not allow you to reach his goal, they will be swallowed up today. Amen. And then as soon as Moses lifted his hand across the Red Sea, the Bible said the east wind began to blow. Now, the east wind is none other than the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says to them that fear him, shall the son of righteousness arise. We know who is the son of righteousness. That's Jesus Christ. We know that sun rises from the east. So the wind that was blowing from the east is none other than the Holy Spirit. And the Bible tells us in Psalm 114, verse 1 to 3, Psalm 114, verse 1 to 3, He said, When that wind began to blow, the sea saw it and fled. The sea recognized that wind, that this is not an ordinary wind. This is the Holy Spirit. And quickly, <laughs> the sea fled and said, Now I'm not going to have a collision with the Holy Spirit. So I believe that the wind is going to blow. It's going to blow for Nigeria. Amen. So that a way will be made in the Red Sea for us. Amen. And then the wind is going to blow for you. Amen. So that everything that is blocking your way will be removed in Jesus' name. Amen. When the wind blows, power will fall. Because in Acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 4, Acts 2 verse 1 to 4 On the day of Pentecost The wind blew And power came I I've already said it before And I'm saying it again That very soon Some of my children Will be so empowered by God That If they are walking in the marketplace And they stumble on someone That fellow will be healed I believe you qualify for that. Amen. But we're going to need hundreds of thousands of people with that kind of power. That's why we're already preparing some workers at the camp now in preparation for December. You see, because the program in December will go roughly like this. We will begin on Thursday night and we will pray all night long, seven hours, solid prayer, led by seven powerful men of God. That will be night number one. So that even by the Friday, <laughs> even heaven will know something is already happening. And then by 12 noon on the Friday, the third Friday of the month, there will be a massive deliverance service. By then, we believe that the crowd would have been in excess of 10 million people. And there will be a massive deliverance service for all these people. And then, by the evening of Friday proper, where we would then have the Holy Ghost night. And then by Saturday, 12 noon, we will lay hands on all those people who want hands laid on them. Now, if you think of the number of people required to lay hands on 20 million people, you know that that cannot be a joking matter at all. So some of you better get ready, because you are going to lay hands. 
Hey, and where will you be at that time? Don't worry, I'll be on the mountain <laughs> with my hands lifted up. As long as the hands are up, Joshua could deal with the people in the valley. And that's what's going to happen. Power is going to fall. Yeah. And because the wind is going to blow, according to Ezekiel 37 verse 1 to 10, Ezekiel 37 verse 1 to 10, dry bones will live again. Yeah. See, there are several people who had written off Nigeria. And now they are beginning to wonder whether they did not write us off too soon. There are several countries who had thought that Nigeria can never be great again. I can assure you. Not only are we going to be the greatest in Africa, we are going to be the greatest in the world. Yeah. Oh, but you are owing so much. <laughs> My father can pay our debt in one day. I'm sure he's going to do so too. How? I won't tell you. Because it won't be wise to tell you. But at least I can tell you one thing. He's going to pay off your own debts. Yeah. <laughs> you see, there are some of you here who will never borrow again. Yeah. He's going to pay your debts, not because of you, but because of me. <laughs> See, because he's told me I cannot be a businessman. And there is work for me to do. And so the money must come from somewhere. And so it's going to prosper some people here. Yeah. It's going to prosper you so much that you say, I don't need more money. And you say, I'm not bringing it because you need it. I'm bringing it because my son needs it. And then you will come to me and say, Daddy, I have an excess two billion naira somewhere. Yeah. Can you use it, sir? And I said, well, thank you, my daughter. Uh, why did I say daughter first? <laughs> and thank you, my son. <laughs> yes, dry bones shall live again. Your businesses shall blossom again. Your marriages shall prosper again. In every sphere of your life, it will be well with you. But then, there is one little hidden secret in this story. Which will show you where you come in. The angel of the Lord came and stood behind the children of Israel to separate them from the enemies until the ways have been opened. Moses lifted his special hands. The sea divided because the wind blew. But do you notice that the children of Israel saw the sea parted, but they didn't move. Why? Who is going to move into the midst of the sea? The Bible said the waters were a wall on the right side and a wall on the you want to go into that? <laughs> Have you ever seen water rising like that? And then you say you want to go into the midst of it. What if it collapses on you? Israel, go forward. They didn't they move. Who is going to move? But you see, God knew ahead of time that they would not move. So he prepared some leaders. People who will say, we will go first. That's where you come in. People who say what? Ah, we will go first. And as these leaders, prompted by the Holy Spirit, began to go, well, the children of Israel said, well, ah, that's Joe going. That's Lizzie going. If he's going, I'm going. We have reached a stage in this program that is going to take us progressively into the perfect will of God for Nigeria that some people must say we will lead the way. I believe some of you belong to that category. I would love to say all of you. <laughs> but each time I want to say all, oh, I get a check in my spirit. 
Because many are called. Few are chosen. When you go through the scriptures, you will discover that there were certain people who were leading the way in the ministry of Jesus Christ. They stood in the background, but they were the one who were actually getting the wheel of the ministry turning. When you read Luke chapter 8, verse 1 to 3, Luke chapter 8, verse 1 to 3, you will find that the reason Jesus Christ had a treasurer was because of some women. These women were rich. And they just decided, Lord, go on preaching. We will keep on financing. Maybe that's why I said <laughs> Some of them had received healing. Some of them used to be witches. God works in wonderful ways, you know. <laughs> Mary Magdalene was uh, a chief among witches. The moment she got delivered, she said, from now on, I'm not spending a cover for the devil. I'm going to spend it for the one who brought me deliverance. And then, when you read Matthew 27, verse 57 to 60, Matthew 27, verse 57 to 60, the Bible mentioned a certain man called Joseph of Arimathea. And it is interesting that the Bible said he was a rich man. I didn't write the Bible. God said he was what? A rich man. When Jesus died on the cross, he was so rich, he was so influential, he was able to go boldly to the man who said crucify Jesus and said, all right, you've killed him, now I want his body. And when you get to John chapter 9, verse 38 to 40, John 19 rather, John 19 verse 38 to 40, you find that it wasn't Joseph of Arimathea alone. Nicodemus was there too. And believe me honestly, the Bible calls Nicodemus a ruler of the Jews. You check among the Jews and they tell you poor people don't rule them. It had been like this in the time of the Lord Jesus Christ that God had some women and some men, wealthy people, who said, Lord, you go ahead, do what you have to do. We will see to it that your program will not fail. That's where you come in, brethren. The work that God wants to do will be done. With you, I hope. I'm sorry to say, he could also do the work without you. That's the truth of the matter. That's why in the conclusion we said, can God count on you? Or do you want him to reach for a substitute? Because whenever God plans to do something, for every man he has chosen, he has a substitute hanging somewhere. Someone is always in the shadow. Just waiting for you to say, I'm no longer interested in doing the purpose of God. And God will say, thank you very much. You can't hold me to ransom. I mean, in 1 Samuel 16, there, verse 1, he called on Samuel and said, Samuel, where are you mourning? Where are you mourning for Saul? I chose him, but he failed, so I've replaced him. There's another young boy that is already waiting to move into his position. I pray that God will never replace you with someone else. We had gone around when we felt that the program this year is going to be much, much bigger than last year. We decided to visit Abuja. I have some children there. They came massively. They were happy that they were even remembered. And they made some beautiful pledges. Then we decided to visit Portacot. And the brethren, Portacot surprised me. In fact, I think the day before the program, one of them said to me, he said, Daddy, I heard you say that God is a Nigerian. I said, yes. He said, we will show those Lagos people that the headquarters of God is in Portacot.
I said, uh, well, you and your big mouth. Tomorrow we show. He said, ah, you wait. And then the day came. June 12th, I think. June 12th, we were in Port Harcourt. And believe me honestly, they surprised us. I think about six of them gave us an average of three million naira each. And then the others came here. I mean, Port Harcourt was a big surprise. I thanked them, I appreciated them, but I told them hmm, that Lagos, so, uh, the head is always the head. That's, that's, my, that's what I told them. You will prove me right or prove me wrong. Today we show. When I'm saying, brethren, it's not just what we do today that matters now. Today, I am not just looking for people who will sponsor Festival 99. I am looking for people who will say, Sir, lift up your hand. Let the wind blow. We will lead the way. I am looking for partners. Because we are in this thing for a long haul. I am not going to rest until the glory of the almighty God covers Nigeria like the waters cover the sea. And I can assure you I'm not dying young. If anybody tells you that this man is dead, tell them a lie. Because we, are, we haven't reached the goal yet. And we are reaching the goal together. I did hear your amen. Before you take any decision today as to what you will do for now and as to what you will continue to do regularly because again and again I will call you. I may call you, it may not be in Musan. I may just say come to the camp. That is once I know those who are my real partners. I may call you to the camp and we may just eat Guguru and Ekwa. Not the beautiful food of uh, Astoria. And, and you know Astoria can cook. Glory be to God. I mean they are just fantastic. But I may just call you and say listen. Brethren this is how far we have gone. This is what I need now. Go back home and bring the money. I am looking for partners. Those who will be with me in this thing for the long haul. Can I assure you of one thing. Ask those few people who have been very close to me, they will tell you that once you become my partners, I will do everything that I know to make sure that you two succeed. One of my children here can tell you, he heard with his ears, not that somebody told him, he heard with his ears, God told him, son, go and put your house in order. So he came to me and said, Daddy, it looks as if I'm about to die. I said, who told you? He said, I had it myself. I laughed. I said, I'm not doubting that you had. But God did not give you to me so that I can weep over you. I will go and talk to Daddy. This one oh, is not dying yet. Because we still have a long way to go together. He said, he's listening. Now, I won't look in his direction. <laughs> he says, yeah, now than ever before. If you become my partner, you, number one, you won't die young. Amen. Number two, your joy will multiply. Amen. Number three, if anybody, any demon, any force whatsoever tries to come near you, uh, <laughs> you know that story in the Bible. When David was in the cave of Adullam, and all those people who were distressed, all those people who had problems, they went and joined him. Those who were owing, they joined him. You know why they did? Well, if you want to collect the money I owe you, <laughs> then you have to be bigger than Goliath. Because David is the captain, and to get to his children, you have to pass through the captain. Any evil that is coming near my partner, I think we will discuss first. And I trust my daddy. 
is the Lord of hosts. He has never lost a battle. And he's never going to lose one. I want to conclude by telling you something I told them in Port Harcourt. Because I believe it is necessary. I don't want anybody giving anything out of pressure. I don't want you to give anything because, well, if I don't give something now, they know I am here and they will say, what is wrong with him? Let me assure you, brethren, it is a privilege to serve the Lord. <clears throat> he has millions of people that he could use. He could pick any other person and put the fellow where you are seated now. Not only that, he can even refuse what you bring. He's done it before. And I told them the story in Port Harcourt. I want to tell you that also in closing. Years ago, I think it was behind 1970 something. I can't remember clearly whether 76 or 77. Anyway, between 75 and 77. The church at Ebute Meta <laughs> was one tiny building. And uh, I think there were about five cars in the church at that time. My own was the newest. And it was second hand. At least it was a good car because they don't have to push it before it will work. At least not all the time. <laughs> uh. And then there was this very wealthy man who joined the church. And I mean he was wealthy. At that time the, to the total number of vehicles in his company and his house was I think 50, either 56 or 57. So if you compare that one, I mean, <laughs> you will know how wealthy he was. And then he came to church one day. And he brought the latest in public address system. I mean the very best that had just come out at that time. He brought it in, in his flowing agbada, and offloaded it in. And we were excited. We were happy. God spoke and said, tell him to take away his gifts I don't want. Now, if we didn't know the voice of God, we would have said, get thee behind us, Satan. Because this is the biggest gift we have ever received, and we were so happy to have them. But God said, tell him, take away your gifts I don't want. <sighs> so we went to the man and said, sir, God said, take away your gifts. I don't want. He said, what? Uh, sorry, sir, but uh, that's what God said. Brethren, I saw sorrow on that day. And I pray I will never see that kind of sorrow again. That man went to the pillar of the church and began to knock his head against the pillar and he was weeping like a child he said now I know that God had rejected me we wish we could convince God to receive the gifts but God said no ask him to take them away he took them away I don't need to tell you how he ended brethren don't give because you are under pressure I'm not pressurizing you please Give only if you want to give joyfully. And even pray before you give whatever you are giving and say, God, please don't reject my gift. Because if he rejects your gift, that means he has rejected you too. Shall bow our heads in prayer. I want you to talk to the Almighty God and thank him that he has decided to even bring you here at all. To listen to this message. That we are here at all could mean that before the foundations of the world, God himself had chosen you as his partner. So thank him for that. 
And then talk to him and say, Lord, I am going to give you something now. I'm going to give to the best of my ability. Please, Lord, don't reject my gift and don't reject me. And then make a covenant with the Almighty God and say, from now on, Father, I will be your partner for this program. You can count on me. Please, Lord, don't ever replace me with anyone else. For the rest of my life, I will serve you wholeheartedly. And whenever I hear anything about this special Holy Ghost Festival, Lord, you can count on me. I will do my very, very best. Just don't, re don't refuse me. And don't refuse my gift. And then decide on what you want to give to him. And I will pray for you. And then you can feel your pledges before we pray again. My Father, my God, I want to bless your name. I want to bless your name for these precious people that you have brought together here today. The programs that we are pursuing for you, Lord, is not for the glorification of any man. It's for the glorification of your name. We thank you that we could even be counted worthy to be here at all today. Many of us know very well that but for your grace we do not belong to this gathering but by grace we were saved by grace we were sanctified by grace we have been chosen and we are very grateful lord please accept our thanks in jesus name thank you lord for giving us an opportunity to be your partners there are several millionaires in nigeria there are billionaires too that it doesn't matter how hard they try, you will not allow them to be partners with you. But you had counted us worthy. We are very grateful, Lord. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Daddy, I'm standing in the gap for all these your children. If there's anything in the lives of these your children that can cause you to refuse them and refuse their gifts, Father, I plead the blood of the Lamb. Father, forgive in Jesus' name. Amen. Because you brought them here today, my Lord and my Savior, I pray that you will extend that grace so that you will receive them and receive their gifts in Jesus' name. Amen. And the grace to give you cheerfully, because I know you only love cheerful givers. The grace to give to the best of their abilities, because I know, God, that you don't receive remnants because you are not a beggar. Whatever grace they need to be what you want them to be, so that from today they will be your partners, Lord, give to them in Jesus' name. Thank you, my daddy. Glory be to your name. For we have prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you now. I'll give you two minutes to please make your pledges. Uh, you have the pledge sheet there. I will be standing here till the pledges have been collected so I could ask special blessings of God on these pledges. You could pledge as an individual. You could pledge on behalf of your companies. If you want your companies to become partners in this program. And there are some things that are not written in the list there. We need buses too, we need cars, we need anything that we could use to make the work easy. So if you know you have any of these things that you know could become useful in the project, please indicate. We need money in Naira, we need in foreign currency, because quite a lot of the equipment...
your name. We bless your name because you are with us and we are on the winning side. Nobody can defeat us. When you set free, you make free indeed. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, your children have made their pledges. Without you we can do nothing. But with you on our side we can do all things. Father, I pray that first you accept their gifts, accept their persons, and then prosper them so much, Lord, that they be able to do twice what they have pledged. Father, so let it be in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray that as I lay hands on them today, Every yoke in their lives will be destroyed. Amen. Every Red Sea in their path will be parted. Amen. And every hindrance, Lord God Almighty, to their joy will be removed. Amen. Let this day mark a turning point for the better in their lives. Amen. And together I pray that we will reign with you in your kingdom. Amen. Thank you, my Father. You. Glory be to your name. Amen. For we have prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen.